Proxmox web interface typically has a self-signed certificate. This makes it a bit tricky to put behind traffic, but don't worry, today I'm gonna break it down for you. Hello Geek Army, Anand here once again. In my last video, we saw how to set up Traffic Reverse Proxy version 3, and then we saw middlewares and middleware chains and how they can improve our setup and maybe make it a bit more secure. And then in my last video, we saw how to put Docker and non-Docker apps behind traffic. But I left you hanging on one specific point. All the apps that we saw were either Docker apps or non-Docker apps running on HTTP protocol. What about those apps that are on HTTPS protocol? We did not see any of those. Good examples of these would be Proxmox Web Interface or Unify Controller, which typically tend to have self-signed certificates and many browsers do not recognize them as being safe. Just a quick note, I am betting on myself to provide you good content in return. I am counting on the community to support me as well. So if you would be a friend and take a moment to hit that like, subscribe and notification bell, I would really appreciate it. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to put Proxmox web interface behind traffic using proper Let's Encrypt certificate. And it makes it even better. You do not have to forward the Proxmox web interface port on your router. As always, there are multiple ways to do this. So if you have a different way of doing this, let us know in the comment section. First, you don't need traffic or any reverse proxy to put the Proxmox web interface behind a fully qualified domain name and proper Let's Encrypt certificate. Proxmox already has a built-in feature to accomplish this and you can read all about it in my guide on setting up Proxmox with proper Let's Encrypt certificate. But there is one problem. You will have to forward port 8006 from your router to your Proxmox host and this creates another problem. When you turn on Cloudflare proxy on this subdomain or the CNAME record that points to your Proxmox host, it's not going to work. This is because Cloudflare only allows certain ports to work behind a proxy. Using traffic circumvents all of these problems and it gets even better. You do not need to forward port 8006 on your router. So let's jump in and find out how to do this. Okay, here I am on my Proxmox web interface. You can see all the virtual machines and LXCs that I am running. UDMS is the ultimate Docker media server that we have been building as a part of my video series. So far, we have traffic installed with several different middlewares and middleware chains. If you are lost on how we got here, check out the link to the playlist in the description below. If I switch over to my Mobax term, which is the SSH client, that I like to use. I'm already SSH'd into UDMS. Here on the left, I see my SFTP browser so I can navigate through all the different folders. So if I go to the app data folder, traffic three and the rules folder and UDMS, which is the host name of this device, I see all of the files here, my middleware, the middleware chains, the TLS options file. This is where the file provider goes. And we're gonna use file provider to put Proxmox web interface behind traffic. Now Proxmox uses a self-signed certificate so the browser throws this warning that we see right here not secure. The way to get around that is slightly different than what I showed in my previous video. In my previous video I used AdGuard Home as an example. You can see that file right there. This is the file provider that we used. What we're going to be doing today is slightly different. Any app that uses HTTPS or a self-signed certificate will have to do that slightly differently. Why? Here's why. So here I have my traffic Docker Compose open. You should have something very similar if you have been following my videos. We're going to be looking at, where is this line? Right here, line number 27. Insecure, skip, verify. It's not set to true, false is the default. When it is set to false, that means traffic will not allow apps that have a self-signed certificate or, or the apps whose certificates are not recognized by the browser to be put behind traffic. This is what is causing the problem. So we have a solution right here. So I could just disable this or enable this, meaning set insecure skip verify to true. And I can use the exact same file provider from here, not make any changes except change the name add guard home to three in three different or add guard to Proxmox in three different location, change the URL to HTTPS and this one right here, 110 
and 8006 port number and make changes to the domain. I would want to probably call it something differently. Make the chain. So far, we don't have Authelia installed in my video series. So we can change the chain to chain dash no auth and we're good to go. We can do it that way. The only problem is that when you enable this option, then it applies universally. Maybe there's a little bit more secure way to do it. So we're not going to do that. So we are going to leave traffic Docker Compose as is, save it. We're going to do it slightly differently. So for this, let's again go over to my GitHub repo. Oh, by the way, I recently changed my repo. So it used to be HTPC beginner slash Docker traffic. Now it's Anand's lab slash Docker traffic. It should automatically redirect, but just a quick note. So here I am in my rules folder for traffic version three. In my home server folder, you will find several different templates. There is even one template for Proxmox, which is what we're going to use. Let's copy this one over and let's head over to Mobax term and I'm in my rules folder right here and let's create a new file called apppve.yml. Why apppve.yml? As I have explained in my previous videos, I like to prefix all my file providers with something more meaningful. All the ones that have app as a prefix means they are a file provider for an app. The ones that have chain are obviously middleware chains and middlewares is obviously middlewares and what else? If I have a domain pass-through enabled to a different device, then obviously it would be domain dash. So this is what I use. So let's open this file right here and copy the contents we just copied over from the GitHub. So we're gonna make some minor changes. Obviously the variable name is underscore one because that is in fact the name of the variable we passed through in my ultimate docker media server guide now for my own personal instance i do use domain name underscore hs so if you copy over from a github these are some changes that you will have to make now we don't have oauth installed if you are interested in google oauth as authentication for your apps behind traffic or authelia for that matter like subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when those videos come out alternatively you can use my deployer script which can automate a lot of different things including setting up traffic and pulling the ssl certificates you can put proxmox behind traffic just by answering a few simple questions it can even set up google oauth and authelia as authentication systems if you're interested, check out the video in the description below. It shows you a preview of what Deployer can do. Okay, back here. Now we'll change this from OAuth to no auth, And we're going to make a few other changes here. The URL here is wrong. I will have to make sure that I'm using the right one. The Proxmox server is on 110. So I will change it to 110 and port number remains the same, 8006. What is different here is these three lines right here. And actually this one here as well. What we are essentially doing is that we are skipping the verification of insecure certificate just for this service right here, which is Proxmox. So let's save this one. And I'm going to hit save. And if you remember, this is a file provider. File providers are dynamic configuration. So you don't need to restart traffic for this to take effect. Alternatively, if you decide to enable skip insecure verify universally on your traffic Docker compost, then you will have to recreate traffic for that change to take effect because it is a static configuration and we're changing the static configuration. Okay, so now let's head back over to my traffic instance right here, dashboard. So if I refresh it and let's say right here already, I see Proxmox service. So if I go into that, it's going to give you the details that we just added. It's referring to this URL. It's a file provider. What else can we see? Uh, if we go, if we go to the routers here, we see the PVE router. So if you go into that, you're going to see all the different middlewares that it is going to be using. So let's now test it out. This is the moment. So if I go to PVE, dot simple oh i have it right there so if i hit that voila i have it now i do have no auth specified so i wasn't asked for an authentication system or layer so if i go back to my pv app and change this to basic auth because we do have basic auth set up so far so i'm going to change it and push it dynamic configuration so it should take effect immediately and if i refresh it voila right there basic auth login and i can login here and i am in of course this is double login whether you want it or not is up to you but it adds a little bit of security not with basic auth but 
Maybe you prefer Otelia or Google OAuth. In fact, I have my Proxmox web interface exposed with Google OAuth and it's been working great for me. All right, Geek Army, that was the end of the video. You saw how easy it is to put Proxmox or any app for that matter that has a self-signed SSL certificate behind reverse proxy using traffic. If you really liked how I did it and my video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. I have several more exciting traffic videos planned, home lab videos planned. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in my future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Go Geek Army.